MedTech Europe was formed in 2012 and it's an alliance of medical technology industry associations from across Europe. Its mission is to bring value-based innovative technology to more people, whilst also supporting the transformation of European healthcare systems for sustainability. Patient safety is a critical component of the improvement in quality of healthcare across Europe. And the industry is working to reduce the incidence of HAIs, often called healthcare or hospital-acquired infections. The ECDC indicate that the incidence rate in acute care hospitals in Europe is about 6% which means on any one day, about one in 18 patients has a HAI. On an annual basis, that means over four million patients are impacted by a HAI. And unfortunately, that is attributed to over 37,000 deaths in Europe every year, which is actually higher than the incidence rate of road deaths. Hospital acquired infections are obviously a key issue for any hospital. We have three hospitals and um, the sort of impact is obviously on the patient that can make them even iller than the problem they originally came in with. Also they are likely to stay longer in hospital. That increases the problems we have in having enough beds available for all of our other patients. And also there's a cost associated with it because either you need to do additional treatments, additional drugs, and also because the patient stays in hospital longer that costs more as well. Most hospital acquired infections are preventable that's partly making sure we screen our patients before they come into hospital so that if they've got an infection we can treat it quickly but also it's making sure that our staff don't transmit it between the patients and themselves or between the patients and that's using the right sort of equipment good training for all of them so they know how to prevent it and also very clever use of antibiotics it's a problem that we need to work hard to prevent but some of it is also brought in with patients. So if I give you an example, a very common illness is winter vomiting norovirus. Uh, that generally is around in the community and when a patient becomes unwell with it, sometimes they are admitted to hospital. It's quite hard to manage within the hospital setting and so actually preventing that transmitting between patients can be very tricky. Another diarrheal infection would be Clostridium difficile, we call it C. diff for short. Uh, that is a, an infection that a lot of us will carry in our gut, but we can make it worse by the types of antibiotics we give patients. So again, our staff need training and get good training to make sure they understand all of that and know how to prevent it wherever possible. In terms of diarrheal infection, the real issue is making sure that we don't keep the patients in hospital too long because they've picked up an infection, because as I've already said, that increases costs and increases length of stay. But also, the NHS in England is always working to basically maximum capacity. So if we're going to make sure we've got enough beds for the ongoing needs of patients coming into hospital, we need to make sure we're not hanging on to patients very long. A significant improvement we've seen recently is as a result of a new test introduced in the laboratory. We know much more quickly if a patient has got an infection. That means we know when we need to isolate them and also what treatment we need to give them. The real benefit of the fast turnaround is knowing whether or not we need to isolate a patient. And in English NHS hospitals, very often we don't have single rooms. And so the issue of isolation doesn't only impact on that one patient, it may impact on, say, a group of six patients who are in the same bay as them. We've calculated that we have gained about 30% of our bed days because we're not having to isolate patients for so long and those beds are therefore available for other means. But also we've calculated approximately a £74,000 monthly cost reduction, again because we're not losing those beds, we're not losing the income and we're not gaining additional costs with those patients needing extra treatments and so on because of infection. The Patients Association is a national independent health and social care charity which has been around for 52 years, which is a remarkable achievement for an independent charity. We do a huge amount of work based on the information that we hear and we provide information and support and casework to patients and the public and their carers that call us on a daily basis. We obviously work with the Department of Health, NHS England, 
um, and many other charities to try and help the NHS better understand some of the poor experiences that people have and looking at ways of working together and coming up with some of the solutions that will improve the journey for patients when they need to come into contact with healthcare. In 2008 we undertook some research and published a report on preventing infection on the front line and as an organisation representing the interests of patients and the public we were disappointed to learn from this research that still years on the professionals that actually healthcare acquired infections didn't seem to be anybody's business. But thankfully, we are in a much, much better place with regards to healthcare acquired infections. The calls and the inquiries that we get around healthcare acquired infections are just a tiny percentage now. When patients go into hospital, they expect to get the best possible, safest care at all times and never be exposed to medical errors. We are in a very, very good place with regards to healthcare acquired infections, especially MRSA, but of course there are many other bloodstream infections that we, we, we have to sort of address and we have to focus on now. Patients are always concerned uh, before they sort of go into hospital. They have, you know, they have their own worries about going into hospital. And we do get calls to our national helpline um, asking us if we know what the infection rates are for a particular ho hospital because very often people are not so worried about the, the actual procedure that they're going to have, they're more worried about whether they will sort of get a, an infection. So we can never be complacent. We are in a good place now with regards to especially MRSA but we also know that the NHS is in a very difficult place with regards to funding. So financial pressures and when you're trying to cut corners, that's when patient safety and medical errors occur. Now is not, not the time to start cutting staff. We need the specialist staff with the specialist skills and we need the focus to remain on healthcare acquired infections. And we need obviously to maintain the zero tolerance around healthcare acquired infections. And we need urgently to be addressing the other infections there are, as well as MRSA and C. diff, there are many other sort of bloodstream infections that we need to really now start addressing. And we, you know, the health service system is absolutely fantastic work and there's a huge amount that we need to celebrate and be proud of and let's sort of maintain that um, and give the public the confidence they require. In the UK we've made real progress on reducing some healthcare associated infections and the prominence of infection prevention and control has really raised over the last 10 years. But one of the most important things we've done is to embed infection prevention and control within the Chief Medical Officer's strategy to reduce antimicrobial resistance. One of the biggest challenges actually is information around infections and the impact that our actions have on reducing those. So what would be really helpful is better information on the type of infections that patients are getting and also to map that against our efforts to reduce infection so we can see where we're making improvements and where we still have more work to do. What the college would like to see fundamentally is actually an evaluation of the nice standards and guidance that we already have what we need to do is to understand what difference the current guidance has actually made, where that's been helpful before we embark on writing more guidance. So a full evaluation of its impact and benefit would be really helpful. One of the ways that we could really help reduce infections for patients is by having infection prevention and control routinely embedded as part of quality improvement programmes within organisations. This would mean that all healthcare professionals are engaged and involved in improving the quality of care that we provide to patients. MedTech Europe is working with healthcare professionals to find solutions for detection, prevention and if needed to treat HAIs. Achieving a zero rate is going to be impossible, we know that, but there is a zero tolerance for non-compliance to finding measures to reduce HAIs. Europe can do better and should do better. And the ways that it can achieve it is through consistent measuring and monitoring, setting realistic and reducing targets, sharing best practice, overcoming innovations to technology adoption, and ultimately finding appropriate funding to reduce HAIs. 
All of that will ultimately achieve the goal of reducing the rate of this very important issue.